By the end of this video, you'll be able to super glide every single time and learn how to do a super glide forwards, backwards, left and right, and even zigzag super glides. I'm Pesky Frank, and today I'm going to teach you the three things you can do to super glide more consistently, and I'll teach you the six different types of advanced super glides. Super gliding combines two different movements, sliding after a mantle and jumping after a mantle. So a super glide is just doing both at the same time. There are two specific timings you need to hit in order to super glide properly. The first timing you need to hit is jump and then crouch a tiny bit later. How much later? Well, one frame later. But how long is one frame? Well, it depends on your frame rate. If you play it 60 frames per second, one frame is 16 milliseconds. But if you play it 360 FPS, you have 2.7 milliseconds. Personally, I play at 144 FPS, which means I need to hit jump and then 6.9 milliseconds later, crouch. If you hit crouch before jumping, you fail. If you hit jump and crouch at the same time, you fail. If you delay the crouch too long, you fail. So how do you consistently hit super glides like this back to back to back? Well, there are three simple things you can instantly do to super glide much more consistently. First, bind V to toggle crouch and hit both V and spacebar together with your thumb. Using your thumb to hit both jump and crouch makes that one frame difference much easier. The second thing you can do is flip your spacebar. I know it sounds funny, but look down at your keyboard right now. Look at the height difference between your spacebar and your V key. When you flip your spacebar around, it makes the spacebar higher and closer to the height of the first row of keys. Recently, Angry Groceries and a well-known movement nerd Jay created a script that allows you to practice this one frame timing. Go to the description and open this link. Now I know this looks scary, but all this is is code that runs a script to measure the delay between your jump and crouch input. Hit Ctrl A to select all the text, then Ctrl C to copy it. On your desktop, type Windows PowerShell and open it up. PowerShell is just a program that can read and run the code that you just copied. So hit Ctrl V to paste the code, hit enter, and follow the steps. I obviously use spacebar to jump, my crouch key is V, and I play on 144 FPS. Once you've entered your settings, now you're ready to practice. Hit space and V with the side of your thumb and check the feedback. The closer you are to an exact single frame, the higher chance you'll super glide. You'll soon realize that the position of your hand, size of your thumb, and damn near the length of your fingernails will affect the chances of you hitting a one frame super glide timing. So flipping your spacebar doesn't seem so stupid now. Well, this one frame timing is just the tip of the iceberg because you need to hit jump and crouch during the 150 millisecond window at the end of your climb animation. When you're climbing, your view bobs up and down. And when it stops, this is the window you need to hit jump and crouch. From this point on, I'm going to refer to hitting spacebar and then a frame later V as the super glide input. So to get the timing right, you can listen to the timing. This only works for these ledges in the range because different heights take longer or shorter to climb and therefore the clicks will be longer and shorter apart. In the description, I have a separate video for just the clicks of the super glide timing. It's 10,000 times easier to super glide when you're listening to the clicks. Now that we know what the two timings are, you need to learn how to super glide. Climb, and at the end of the climb, super glide with your thumb. Now for some common mistakes. If you try to super glide and you end up jumping like this, you're super gliding too late. And if you crouch, you're super gliding too early. If you do something like this, you're close, but this is not a super glide. This is a super glide. A proper super glide will give you a speed around 530. And you can see you go from zero to 530 in a single frame. You'll know when you've done a super glide right when it feels like a rope pulls you forwards. Once you're comfortable with super glides, it's time to learn how to change directions. This is how we're going to build towards zigzag super glides. There are five different types of advanced super glides. First, we have the diagonal super glide. The steps to the diagonal super glide are same as the normal forward super glide, but all you're going to do is hold W and A to super glide to the left, or W and D to super glide to the right. You gotta get used to hitting A and super glide at the same time. So practice the input timings on the ground first before trying to super glide. Once you're hitting consistent diagonal super glides on both sides, we can move on. Next, we have a sideways super glide. The sideways super glide is a little bit harder because now you need to release W at the end of your climb just before you super glide. Now this is key. The longer time between when you release W and actually super glide, 
determines how strong your super glide will be. So if you release W a millisecond before you hit super glide, you'll have full power. If you release W a little too early, you'll get a weak super glide like this. You need to release W right before the super glide input. So the steps to a sideways super glide are climb, release W at the top, hold A, and super glide. If you end up doing a diagonal super glide, you need to release W earlier. If you're pushing off like this, you're super gliding too early. Also, make sure you're practicing with the clicks in the background, it's much easier. Consistent sideways super glides are extremely important for zigzag super glides, so make sure you nail them down before you move on to the next step. Next, we have the backwards super glide. The backwards super glide is similar to the sideways super glide, where you have to release W at the top of your climb, but now when you hold A or D, you need to hold S as well. To do a backwards super glide, release W at the top of your climb, hold A and S, and super glide all at the same time. Once you can hit backwards super glides, we can move on to zigzag super glides. A zigzag super glide combines a sideways super glide with a mid air tap strafe. Before I teach you how to do that, make sure you leave a like. I nearly went insane trying to learn the zigzag super glide, and I hope this is just much easier. So, yeah. After you've started the sideways super glide, you need to tap W while still holding A. This is because you need to carry your momentum diagonally. Then release both W and A together and hold D and scroll wheel up at the same time. This is the tap strafe that will carry your momentum in a semicircle to the right. Then you need to hold S. Holding S stops your forward momentum and makes the tap strafe much sharper. If you don't do it exactly like this, it won't be as fast and it won't be as sharp. Now don't even think about practicing the zigzag super glide until you practice the key presses on the ground first. Once those key presses are second nature, practice sideways super glides. You need to consistently hit sideways super glides before you even attempt zigzag super glides. Then you can start to build off your sideways super glides, slowly adding the zigzag inputs on each attempt. It might feel impossible at first, but trust me, with practice, you'll finally get it. You can do a zigzag out of a diagonal super glide, but this isn't as strong as a proper zigzag super glide, since you don't move left and to the right as drastically. We can call this a lazy zigzag super glide. Now, theoretically, backward super glides are possible, and the steps to a backward super glide would be holding A in super glide, tap S and release A, then hold D, scroll up, and hold W and D together. The reason I say theoretically is because I've never hit one. I've spent the last four days super gliding in the range to make this video and I just don't have the patience to spend another whole day trying to hit a backwards zigzag super glide. Advanced super glides like this look cool in TikTok clips, but they just aren't practical. The reason I make tutorial videos is to help make you a better player and hitting super glides won't help you rank up. So if you want to learn movement tech that's actually useful and can help you win more gunfights, click this video right here to learn how to raz strafe. Also, if this was the best super glide tutorial you've ever seen, make sure you leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to see other tutorials just like this one.